the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. The Russian controlled Zaporizhia. Zaporizhia plant. Zaporizhia. 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 La planta nuclear de Zaporizhia. And it's situated in the middle of a battlefield. Isolated on the front line in eastern Ukraine. Do we risk a repeat of the Chernobyl disaster? Or are we casualties in a frenzied information war? It is just terrible. It is an emergency situation that we've never seen before. Fear-mongering, irresponsible, it just isn't real. It's difficult to imagine a worse place for a nuclear reactor, let alone six of them. It's a huge piece of infrastructure, and the Ukrainians and the Russians have both been fighting for control. But is that something we really need to worry about? While some people say a major incident at the facility could be catastrophic, people like the staff who work there. It will be so bad that I don't know even how to explain to you how bad it will be. The level of radioactive pollution and most importantly, the contamination will spread across thousands of square kilometers of land and sea. The war in eastern Ukraine has consumed a landscape populated by agricultural towns and industrial cities and a sprawling facility that generated more than 20% of Ukraine's electricity. An early target for the Russians, it was seized in the first few days of the invasion. Heavy fighting was captured on the power plant's CCTV system as the Russians approached in an armored column. Employees begged them not to use weapons. Ukrainian troops retreated to the other side of the Dnipro River, and the plant remains on what is effectively the front line. Artillery shells have hit secondary buildings at the site, and electricity lines have been targeted with missiles. Safety experts say they've never seen anything like it. We need to be very worried. Um, it is This situation is completely different from anything in terms of how it's supposed to be with a nuclear power plant. And you know, Ukrainians who work at the plant are worried. They told us there's nothing in the manual to help them deal with something like this. We spoke to a number of them anonymously. It is an emergency situation that we've never seen before. It's not written up in the documentations and it's already too late to write the rules. What can I say? Unfortunately, human history already has disasters like Chernobyl and Fukushima. Ukrainians know more than most about nuclear disasters. The trauma at Chernobyl has left a terrible scar. In 1986, a meltdown in reactor number four caused an explosion and a fire that would contaminate a large swathe of Eastern Europe. The number of deaths and related illnesses aren't fully known. Still, the whole setup at Zaporizhia is different, starting with the fact that they've taken the reactors and they've effectively mothballed them. They've turned down the dial to low. There are six nuclear reactors at the plant, and five of those reactors have been put into cold shutdown because of the war. They're not producing power. The other one's in hot shutdown, so it could produce a small amount of electricity if required. Unlike Chernobyl, these reactors are enclosed in thick concrete shells right round from top to bottom, and the reactor vessel, which contains the nuclear fuel rods, is wrapped in a steel shell. I think it's clear that the design, the, the buildings at Zaporizhia, they're safer than Chernobyl. The experts agree on this. However, the plant's reactors need to be cooled with water as does the used fuel kept in these ponds and storage areas. 2,000 tons of this radioactive material is stored here. The cooling system is powered by electricity, and they've already had a number of blackouts. But there are engineers who think the risk of an explosion is low. I read a senior Ukrainian person saying the plant could explode any day. And that's um, fear-mongering, irresponsible, it just isn't real. And if the plant were to suffer the worst accident one can think of, someone drops a real military bomb on it, it's still hard to compare it even to Chernobyl. It's just not going to be like that.
It might be like Fukushima, which didn't kill anybody. All right. Does that mean the risk of a radiation leak or, or even a radiological disaster has been eliminated? Well, not exactly. The Russians have been using the power plant as an army base in the knowledge that the Ukrainians are unlikely to shell it. Much of the complex repurposed for war, say employees, with some 2,000 soldiers camping on the premises. They occupied the industrial technical spaces, subsidiary spaces. They deployed their stuff in corridors. They put their sandbags and made their positions and fortifications there. Many of the plant's Ukrainian staff have left or fled, and those who remain are struggling to maintain it. And they've got to deal with their new supervisors, Russian soldiers and officials from Russia's atomic agency. And you know, these people have a reputation. We have a lot of workers of the station who have been taken to the basement, who have been tortured. It can be psychological torture when people in balaclavas come and talk to you and there are people who have been interrogated using electricity. It is just, it is just terrible. It doesn't sound good, does it? I mean, no wonder people are frightened. Remember when the Russians were accused of putting objects resembling explosives on the roofs of several reactors? Well, that set off alarm bells around the world. We start with the development in Ukraine. Moscow, in turn, has said Kyiv is planning to attack the facility. It has been a nerve-wracking night for all of Ukraine. But when inspectors from the UN's Atomic Energy Agency searched the area, they couldn't find anything. So how do we assess all the information and the misinformation? I mean, at times it seems deliberately scary. Here, a panelist on Russian TV suggests the destruction of the reactors would work to Russia's advantage. But when it comes to destruction, the unthinkable has already happened. The Kakovka Dam was designed to withstand almost anything imaginable. But the structure was brought down. Many blame the Russians because the dam was under their control. Could the same happen at Zaporizhia? Well, some say yes. There, there is too much focus on thinking of the issues in technical terms. What is the degree of intention and viciousness on the side of, of the occupiers? What is it that they want to achieve? And this can, of course, be very spontaneous. Plot workers agree. They say their Russian masters are unpredictable. I don't exclude the possibility that when they leave the nuclear power station, they will try to do as much damage as possible. Will this cause a radioactive emergency? I don't know. But I don't believe they are very sensible. A major nuclear power facility in the middle of a war zone, operated by people from both sides in the conflict. Sounds like a nightmare, right? Well, a lot has already been done to reduce the risk, and international inspectors have been given access to the site. But if we've learned anything from this conflict, the unthinkable doesn't mean impossible. <laughs>